Good evening, you're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell and these are the headlines that we are tracking this evening. The Election Commission cancels elections to two assembly seats in Tamil Nadu over Manipa, decision first in the history of the country's electoral politics. The NDA holds mega event Vikas Parv at India Gate to mark two years of the Narendra Modi government. Cabinet ministers participate in panel discussion as moderators explain progress in various sectors. Congress tears into the NDA claims on development, releases booklets highlighting failures of the Modi government, says Centre has failed on several fronts. US snubs Pakistan over India's bid for nuclear supplies group membership, says Islamabad must understand the bid is not about an arms race. And the WHO rejects a call to move or postpone the Rio Olympics due to the Zika outbreak. More than 100 leading scientists had called for shifting the Games out of Brazil. For the first time in India's electoral history, the Election Commission has decided to revoke the notification to two assembly seats in Tamil Nadu. The EC has also decided to conduct polls to two seats in due course of time. The, the, the decision has been taken following evidence of the use of money to influence voters. Earlier, the Election Commission had on two occasions postponed uh, the polls to Arav Kurichi and Tanjavur Assembly constituencies following reports of large-scale distribution of money and gifts to voters by the candidates and political parties. Initially, the polls were postponed from the 16th of May to the 23rd. On the 21st of May, the EC had decided to once again postpone them to the 13th of June. Meanwhile, the DMK had once again petitioned the Election Commission today to hold polling in the two constituencies before the 6th of June due to the Ramzan season and Rajya Sabha elections in the state. The Congress has announced its list of nominees for the Rajya Sabha elections. Former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram has been fielded as the party nominee from Maharashtra. Former Law Minister Kapil Sibal is the nominee from Uttar Pradesh. Jairam Ramesh, who was the Union, Minister, Union Environment Minister in the UPA government, is the nominee from Karnataka. Other names include Oscar Fernandez from Karnataka, Congress General Secretary Ambika Soni from Punjab, Chaya Varma from Chhattisgarh, Vikas Tankha from Madhya Pradesh and Pradeep Tamta from Uttarakhand. Congress Pri uh, President Sonia Gandhi had rounds of several meetings with uh, senior leaders. Senior Congress leader Gulam Nabi Azad and other leaders have also met several times to decide on the names. Biennial elections to the 57 Rajya Sabha seats, including the one vacated by Liga Baron Vijay Malya, will be held on the 11th of June. From Chhattisgarh, Shrimati Chaya Varma, she is an OBC leader. From Karnataka, Shri Oscar Fernandez and Shri Jairam Ramesh. Third seat will be filled up in consultation with General Secretary in charge, PCC President and the Honorable Chief Minister. From Madhya Pradesh, Shri Vivek Tankha. From Maharashtra, Shri P. Chidambaram. From Punjab, Shrimati Ambika Soni. From Uttar Pradesh, Shri Kapil Sibbal. And from Uttarakhand, Shri Pradeep Tamta. We sincerely hope that with the active support of all the Congress leaders and the legislators, not only are all these Congress nominees going to be elected with full majority, but they will play a pioneer role in the upper house, the house of elders, by their wisdom and experience in strengthening not only the Congress party, but the essential fabric of India as also democracy. The top union ministers joined a gala event aimed at publicizing the achievements of the Narendra Modi government on completion of two years in office. The event has also a smattering of Bollywood actors, including Amitabh Bachchan. The five-hour-long program called Vikas Parv is currently underway and the centerpiece function is being held at the India Gate Lawns. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and many of his ministerial colleagues spoke at length about numerous steps taken by the government across sectors. Some cabinet ministers joined in from different parts of the country, including Mumbai, Nagpur, Ahmedabad, Guwahati and Vijayawada. 
एक्टर अमिताभ बच्चन होस्टेड सेगमेंट फॉर द बेटी बचाओ बेटी पर हाउस की सवा तीन सौ रुपए साल में आपको इन द मिस्ट ऑफ अ ग्लोबल स्लो डाउन टू मेक एन इकोनॉमी वर्क इज द रियल चैलेंज वेन द गोइंग इज गुड एवरीबडी इज इट इज बेस्ट इट्स ओनली वेन द गोइंग इज वेरी चैलेंजिंग एंड यू हैव क्रॉस कर अगेंस्ट यू दैट यू नीड टू ग्रो फास्टर दैट्स द बिग चैलेंज एंड देर वी हैव अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ग्लोबल डिमांड टूडे and global demand impacts on domestic demand now as far as urban demand in india is concerned urban demand is on the rise i think the real challenge is because 55% 60% of the people are in villages the rural demand has to increase and indications of rural demand increasing are slowly coming in the last two monsoons have adversely impacted rural demand this year hopefully if we have a good monsoon i think Rural demand itself will increase. Now, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi led a protest march in Delhi against the Ahmad Party government in Delhi and the BJP government at the centre. Rahul raised the issue of power cuts and water shortages in Delhi. The march began from Rajghat and ended at the Delhi Secretariat, that is the administrative headquarters of the government. The state unit of the Congress held district level meetings for four days from the 24th to the 27th of May over the power and water scenario in the national capital. दो साल हो गया इधर केजरीवाल जी उधर नरेंद्र मोदी जी पूरे देश में सूखा पड़ा हुआ है विदर्भा में महाराष्ट्र में मराठवाड़ा में किसान आत्महत्या कर रहा है मार रहा है अपने आप को और आज यहां पे इंडिया गेट में दो साल का सेलिब्रेशन हो रहा है फंक्शन हो रहा है बॉलीवुड के लोग आए हुए हैं नाच गाना हो रहा है The main opposition party, the Congress, has come down heavily on the NDA government on its second anniversary in the in power at the center. Dismissing the government's claims of good performance on the economic front, the Congress also termed Modi government's uh, flagship scheme, Make in India, a non-starter. Punching holes in the claims made by the NDA government on completion of two years in power at the center, the main opposition Congress termed the nation's mood somber and sullen regarding Modi government's performance so far. Congress also released a booklet highlighting the failures of the central government on several fronts such as inflation job creation and growth rate in the agri sector Where are the jobs the most notable failure of the NDA government has been in job creation the ferment in universities can be partly attributed to the bleak future faced by university graduates besides there are millions of young people who will complete no more than 8 or 10 years of school education and will have no special skills where are the jobs for them the party blamed the government for failing to anticipate the severe drought situation in several parts of the country and said it has adversely affected farmers the main opposition party also termed nda government's flagship scheme make in india a non starter make in india is at the present stage a non starter there is a study which shows that the bulk of the fdi inflows have come into the services sector and not into manufacturing 893 projects were classified as stalled projects in march 2016 former finance minister p chidambaram also questioned the government's claims on gdp numbers saying there is a growing dichotomy between the gdp numbers and other economic indicators The Congress also heaped praise on RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan, who is facing unrelenting attack by BJP MP Subramaniam Swami, asking whether the NDA deserves Rajan. Vishal Dahiya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Veer Narayan Swami, who was the MOS in the PMO during Dr. Manmohan Singh's tenure, will be the new Chief Minister of Puducherry. The decision on Narayan Swami was taken after a legislature party meeting in the Union Territory today. His name was zeroed in after a week of indecision in the Congress party. State party leaders consulted with the party high command after meeting in Delhi. Senior Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit and Party General Secretary Mukul Vasnik attended the meeting as AICC observers.
In the 16th May Assembly polls, Congress won 15 seats, while the DMK won two, as the Combine unseated the ruling AINRC, which ended with eight seats in the 30-member Assembly. Now, Prime Minister Modi was in Meghalaya today on his maiden visit to the northeastern state. The Prime Minister spent time with dancers and artisans at the Moflang village, about 20 25 kilometers from Shillong. In a rare gesture, Modi took a cue in drumming from one of the artisans who praised the Prime Minister for his attempt. Meghalaya Governor V. Shan Mugatan, D. Chief Minister Dr. Mukul Sangma and Assam Chief Minister Sarvananda Sonawal were also present at the function. Prime Minister Modi had flagged off new passenger trains for Northeast and also laid the foundation stone for a football stadium, Ampati, on Friday. Now, there was ruckus in the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly today for the second consecutive day. The Assembly proceedings started today with Congress and National Conference leaders staging a walkout while protesting against the lack of adequate relief for the victims of the 2014 floods. Relief funds were distributed while the state was under governor's rule but were stopped when the PDP-BJP government came to power. The Opposition National Conference and Congress legislators staged a walkout after Speaker Kavindra Gupta rejected an adjournment motion to discuss the issue of the relief to the 2014 flood victims. Engineer Rashid also staged a walkout on the issue of dedicated colonies for Kashmiri pundits. We adjournment motion today इस वक्त कार्रवाई चल रही है इसम्बली की इसको सस्पेंड किया जाए और डिस्कशन किया जाए जो फ्लड विक्टिम्स को अभी तक पूरा रिलीफ नहीं मिला वॉकआउट इस बात को लेके हुआ कि मेरा सवाल था कश्मीरी माइग्रेंट्स के बारे में जो हमारे हिंदू माइग्रेंट भाई हैं तो नईम अख्तर साहब ने खुद ही कहा आज से पांच छह दिन पहले कि हम और हुरियत इस मुद्दे को लेकर एक ही पेज पर हैं लेकिन असेंबली में मैंने कहा कि अगर आप एक पेज पे हैं तो क्या आप कश्मीरी माइग्रेंट्स की वापसी के लिए हुरियत से बात करेंगे ही हैड नो आंसर एंड ही केप्ट मम इनके पास कोई जवाब ही नहीं था नाउ टू अ स्पेशल सीरीज ऑन द ड्राट अक्रॉस द कंट्री एंड आवर फोकस टुडे इज बारमेर इन राजस्थान the district has suffered famine 14 times in the last 16 years. 2,206 villages of this district have been declared routed. Here's a special report. Barmer, the district located in the Thar Desert in Rajasthan. Life here is very tough. The Pakistan border stretches around 270 kilometers. There are sand dunes all around. The district has a population of over 26 lakhs. It is in the grip of a severe drought. Eleven villages in the Bayatu Panchayat, which has a population of 7,000, is struggling to get water. 70 percent से अधिक हमारा काल घोषित है गांव, लेकिन फिर भी अभी तक कुछ सारे पानी की व्यवस्था इस गांव में नहीं हुई है, जो लोगों की हालत बहुत बेहद खराब है. Livestock is a fallback option at the time of drought, but with the water shortage, there has been no yield, no food for humans none for animals. Around 400 animals have died so far. Like other parts of the country, the burden of fetching water falls on the shoulders of women and young girls. The district administration has declared drought in 2,206 villages. अकाल के समय में जो भी गतिविधियां प्रशासन को संसालित की जानी होती है, वो हम सारी गतिविधियां आगे बढ़के चला रहे हैं। पूरे जिले में लगभग 1600 के करीब ऐसे पॉइंट हैं जहां पर हम टैंकर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कर रहे हैं। Assurances are proving to be insufficient for residents who are bearing the brunt of the scorching heat and scarcity. Arvind Kumar Singh's report for Rajasabha TV. A look now at other stories from around the country and nationwide. Girls outshone boys with a pass percentage of 96.36% in the CBSE Class 10th exams. According to data shared by CBSE, 85.60% of students of government-aided schools cleared the exam. The overall pass percentage is 93.21, which has come down from 97.32% in the previous year. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan and CPMC Secretary Koderi Barakrishnan are in Delhi. Vijayan met the Prime Minister for the first time after assuming power. He'll be taking part in a CPM Politburo meeting. As per norm, it is customary for any new Chief Minister to meet the Prime Minister and the President after taking office in their respective states. 
The death toll in the Dombi Valley Chemical Factory blast has risen to 12. The blast was an impact of the massive fire that resulted in heavy damage of the neighbouring factories in the MIDC complex. Industry Minister Subhash Desai has ordered a week-long shutdown of all chemical factories in the city for safety and security audit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended best wishes to his Pakistani counterpart Nawaz Sharif, who will be undergoing an open-heart surgery in the UK. Nawaz will undergo the surgery on the 31st of May. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. The finance minister Arun Jaitley will leave for Tokyo on Sunday evening for a six-day visit to Japan. During his visit, there will be a number of significant meetings for boosting business synergy between the two countries. Jaitley's schedule includes a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, followed by interactions with top Japanese CEOs. The minister would also attend the 22nd International Conference on the Future of Asia. Minister's visit is expected to expand the presence of Japanese companies in India and is aimed at developing long-term investments. He's also scheduled to meet uh, the Indian organizations at India Club in Osaka and address a Make in India Investment Promotion Seminar. Business delegations from industry bodies FIKI and CII will also accompany Jaitley. The United States has once again backed India's membership to the elite nuclear suppliers group, saying that the bid is not about an arms race. The U.S. statement is being seen as a snub to Pakistan that has been opposing India's bid on the grounds that it will give base to a nuclear arms race in the region. The U.S. has said that India's entry is about peaceful use of nuclear energy. State Department Deputy Spokesperson Mark Toner said, and I quote, This is not about an arms race and it's not about nuclear weapons. It's about the peaceful civil use of nuclear energy and so we would certainly hope that Pakistan understands that." Unquote. Now, according to media reports emerging today, Pakistan may not get the eight F-16 fighter jets from the United States. The $700 million fighter jet deal seems to have failed following the financial row between the two countries. According to the media report, the Pakistani government was required to provide the letter of acceptance for the purchase of the jets on the 24th of May. But Dawn News reported that the document was not issued, leading to the expiry of the offer. Pakistan expected to get the fighters at a subsidized rate of 270 million US dollars, but Washington asked for full payment of the aircrafts. The offer was not acceptable to Pakistani authorities, who remained adamant that the offer must come without any preconditions. The $700 million deal for the F 16 fighter jets was initially to be partially financed by the United States. But the Congress disallowed it, uh, subsidizing the sale over concern that Pakistan had not done enough to end the dreaded Haqqani network's terror sanctuaries on its soil, as well as fears over Pakistan's nuclear program. Now, top international focus, uh, the World Health Organization today rejected a call from more than 100 leading scientists to move or postpone the Rio Olympic Games due to the threat posed by the large outbreak of the Zika virus in Brazil. The WHO said having the games in Rio as planned would not significantly alter the spread of the virus. The World Health Organization has rejected a call to move or postpone this year's Rio Olympic Games over the Zika outbreak. The organization argued that it would not significantly alter the spread of the virus, which is linked to serious birth defects. In an open letter to the WHO, more than 100 leading scientists had said new findings about Zika made it unethical for the games to go ahead. They also said the global health body should revisit its Zika guidance. Earlier on Friday, US health officials said the Zika virus outbreak does not pose enough of a threat to cancel or delay the Olympics. There is no public health reason to cancel or uh, delay the Olympics. But I think there is the, the risk to delegations going and athletes is not zero, but the risk of any travel isn't zero. 
uh, but the risk is not particularly high other than for pregnant women. The Zika outbreak began in Brazil a year ago, but now more than 60 countries and territories have continuing transmission. While Zika symptoms are mild, the experts say it causes babies to be born with abnormally small heads and may also cause a rare and sometimes fatal neurological syndrome in adults. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has sharply criticized the Western policy towards Moscow, describing a newly expanded U.S. missile defense system in the European countries as a threat to his country's security. In a strongly worded warning issued on Friday, Putin warned Romania and Poland that they could uh, find themselves in the sights of Russian rockets because they're hosting elements of a U.S. missile shield that Moscow considers a threat to its security. The U.S. military has said uh, that uh, the shield is not, to put, uh, to, uh, not put to threat in Russia, but is needed to defend the country from Iran. However, earlier this month, the United States switched on uh, the Romanian part of the shield. Повторяю, это ответные действия, ответные. Мы мы не предпринимаем никаких первых шагов. То же самое будет и в Польше. Будем ждать, пока в Польше будут проведены определенные действия. Ничего делать не будем, ничего. The supporters and opponents of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump today clashed during an election rally in California, San Diego City. The protests erupted following Trump's remarks in which he pledged to build a border wall to keep out illegal immigrants. The police made 35 arrests and declared any gathering outside the San Diego Convention Center unlawful. Ahead of the June 7th California primary, supporters and opponents of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump clashed during an election rally in California's San Diego City. Police arrested 35 people and declared a gathering outside the city's convention center unlawful as stones and water bottles were thrown. The protest erupted after Trump pledged to build a border wall to keep out illegal migrants. Hours earlier, speaking at a rally in Fresno, Trump said he was not anti-women and hopes to garner more support from them. We went to Indiana and won in a massive landslide and we won with the evangelicals and we won with the women, thank you. You know, you know, we're breaking records in the polls with men. I love you too, see? They're all screaming, women love you. That's, I love women. But believe me, I love women. I love women. In the same speech, Trump continued his attack on his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton saying she does not look very presidential. Do you think Hillary looks presidential in office? I don't think so. And I'm not going to say it because I'm not allowed to say it because I want to be politically correct. So I refuse to say that I cannot stand her screaming into the microphone all the time. It's Actually, that's why I turned it off last night. It wasn't that she was lying about me at every single corner. I just couldn't stand it. I got such a headache. Oh, please. The presumptive Republican nominee has also ruled out a one-on-one -on -one debate with second-place Democratic hopeful Bernie Sanders calling the idea inappropriate. I heard that he was going to debate me, and then I heard that he was not going to debate me, and then I heard that he was going to debate me, and now you're telling me that he is not going to debate me. Well, you know, I, I hope that he changes his mind again. I mean, Mr. Trump is known to change his mind many times in a day. Uh, and I would, you know, Trump goes around, he's a bully, he's a big tough guy. On Friday, Trump was greeted by civil unrest in California, which is home to the largest Latino population in the country. Late last month, a visit to the California Republican Convention set off days of protest in the area, leading to several arrests. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some other international news stories now in Global Buzz. The Australian police made several arrests as scuffles between right-wing nationalists and anti-racism protesters broke out in Melbourne. The United Patriots Front organised a rally while anti-racism protesters marched alongside. Fears of young Australian Muslims being inspired by militants such as Islamic State and travelling to fight in Iraq and Syria have underpinned support for the right-wing groups like UPF and Reclaim Australia.
Three journalists who were held by Colombia's Marxist ELN rebels were freed from Notre de Santander after going missing for the past six days. Notre de Santander is a hub for the cultivation of coca, the plant used to make cocaine, and for the smuggling of goods from neighboring Venezuela. Rebel groups and criminal gangs, mainly, many of which include former paramilitary fighters, sometimes fight for control of trafficking routes and drug crops. SpaceX successfully launched its Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The rocket is set to deploy a TICOM-8 communication satellite for Thailand. It's planning to be the second Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX to make a geosynchronous of a transfer orbit. The Falcon 9 rocket will attempt another high-speed ocean barge landing after recently making space history by completing two other attempts. Security forces used tear gas to push back hundreds of protesters who tried to get closer to Baghdad's fortified Green Zone. Witnesses said that Iraqi forces fired tear gas as protesters when they tried to remove razor wires and concrete slabs, blocking roads to the Green Zone, which houses parliament, government buildings and many foreign embassies. This is the second time that the Iraqi forces used tear gas to disperse protesters. Last Friday, the Iraqi forces used live ammunition and tear gas to push back protesters who broke into the Green Zone. Time for some sports action now in Sports Beat. Top seed Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis defeated Japanese pair of Nao Hibino and Eri Huzumi in straight sets to reach the third round of the women's doubles event at the French Open. The Indo Swiss pair got the better of the Japanese pair 6 2 6 0 in a lopsided match in the second round. They'll next face a Barbora Krajkova and Katrina Senaikova of the Czech Republic. British Olympic champion Mo Farah ran the third quickest time of his career to win the 10,000 meter at the Prefontaine Classic in Oregon. Farah, who will defend his titles in Rio, ran 26 minutes 53 seconds in his first track reign since the 2015 World Championships. He's undefeated at the 2000 meters since the 2011 World Championships. Real Madrid will be aiming for a record-extending 11th European Cup and further torment to their city rivals Atletico as they meet in the Champions League final at Milan San Siro Stadium later today. The team took to the pitch for a final training session on the eve of the big match, a repeat of the 2014 final in Lisbon, which saw Real come from behind to win 4-1 after extra time. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night. Thank you.